So, we are going to continue this session uh, into the next stage uh, where we want to solve different kinds of problems. Earlier we were only talking about uh, linearly separable problems and then how we can use perceptron to uh, solve those kinds of problems. But in the real situation we get into various data sets, you know speech, let us first talk about the speech. The one that I am talking right now is recorded and then I want to be able to recognize what I am talking. And for that first of all I need to find out where is my word boundary in all of those and then uh, take the signal values related to that uh, word and then process it in some way and then finally say that what I am saying is this let us say speech is one word ok. In the same fashion you know you create various word boundaries and then uh, identify each uh, word and finally, uh, take it to the application where uh, you would like to say for example, uh, the Alexa or the Google Home or Siri or whatever you know those applications are actually listening to your speech and then uh, figuring out what you are really talking with respect to the string of words and finally, convert this into the uh, sentence, maybe search the web or you know tries to figure out what exactly you are asking for and finally, list those items that you are really uh, looking for right in some fashion. So, this is one application where the data is coming in a sequential fashion. So, I should be able to um, take these as the input and finally, do something with that. And then documents, we spoke about this several times you know we been talking about uh, uh, tokenizing the documents and then using the word as one element for us to process but that is not going to be the case all the time right. So, we need to be able to understand a sentence for you to understand a sentence you need to have the string of words and then using those string of words you should be able to understand that as a sentence and then what that sentence means and then finally, uh, provide what that uh, actually is asking for. For example, if that sentence is a question asking uh, the system to find out uh, various documents related to natural langu language uh, processing right related to natural language uh, processing. <coughs> so, the data is coming in as sequence of words and this contains both audio, or video and so on. So, both speech and the images are coming in as a sequence. So, we should be able to process it uh, and then provide the necessary output. So, weather forecast again based on the historical information, it is not an isolated incident. The same with the stock market deals with at least uh, several different uh, variables based on which you predict what is going to be the uh, stock price of, as of today for a given script. Okay. So, how do you process these? Uh, Okay, so, before uh, that you know we also need to uh, mention a few things about the artificial neural networks as we had seen earlier right. It is possible to process these values for example, the computation of this the x 1 w 1 1 ok. So, these are all independent of each one of those. So, you can see that there is a massive parallelism in this. So, it is possible to utilize the parallel processing to really compute all these values independently and then later combine them here right. And then we also had seen that it is possible to uh, learn from the training samples. Uh, we were able to really figure out uh, that uh, even though we fed about 5000, 6000 sentiment words, uh, the weights are adjusted in such a way that it really generalized the weights for all the input uh, sentiment words right. 
it is not related to just one word. The weights are not related to just one word. It is related to all uh, words that we had input. So, that means it has generalized the weight. It also figures out the latent patterns in the data. We will uh, talk about this. And finally, it uh, generalizes and uh, associates the data sets in some fashion like I have mentioned earlier. Okay. Okay, going back to this, so in order for us to identify those uh, patterns, uh, we require the neural net. For example, so why the script uh, is down today? Is there any similar situation that I am able to find out from the historical information? Since the number of parameters are huge in order for you to find that out, we want to use the uh, neural network which really is good in terms of identifying those patterns which are inherent in the data set. The same fashion, I want to find out whether uh, it is going to rain today or not uh, because of these kinds of input parameters that I am having today with respect to the temperature, humidity, uh, all that the pressure and so on. Is there any similar situation that existed earlier that caused a rain? Then we can say with some probability that today it may rain and so on. Right? So, for that again we require lots of data set and system if it is trained using the neural network, it should be able to figure out those patterns in the historical information and then give you with some uh, value that you can use it to predict. Uh, same with the uh, videos, you know the data is sequential in nature. Okay, so, for all of this uh, we need uh, a neural net of different type than what we had seen in the perceptron case. Okay, so, we will uh, talk about those one by one uh, in the subsequent lectures. So, first we will uh, talk about uh, artificial neural network, where we have a feed forward model and back propagation model. The feed forward is something that we had seen earlier in the perceptron as well. When the inputs are given, you keep feeding the data into the hidden layer and then finally, compute the values in the output layer. Right? So, that is the feed forward model. Back propagation is the error is found, so I need to adjust the values of V and W, how do I do that? So, what is the mechanism through which I want to adjust these weights? Okay. Okay. So, the idea of uh, this one is to really chain the weight, so that the estimated target is close to the target value and thereby minimizing error for the uh, for each neuron and the uh, network as a whole. So, that is the idea. So, this is very similar to what we saw in the XR model, but we are extending it little more. Okay. The size would uh, dictate the complexity of the network. This is a very simple network with four input uh, units, two hidden units and two output units. Okay. So, here we want to minimize the error. Uh, using this cost function. So, we before that let me explain the network part. I hope you can see this clearly. Uh, we have x here and then each element in this input uh, layer has a neuron that takes the input value and then passes it to the hidden through the weights. We have x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4 and then uh, we have a hidden unit uh, there are two hidden uh, units and there are two uh, output units. I have actually divided the hidden unit into two and the output units into two parts. Okay. So, like this. So, the reason for that is I am going to be computing the net uh, values of z 1 coming from all the input units right through the weights. <coughs> ok. 
ok. So, the net is computed using w t x. So, x is your input vector, w is your weight matrix that is connecting the uh, input and the hidden units. To get the net value which I am calling it as z or z which is nothing but the dot product of the transpose of the weight vector and the input vector x. So, it is nothing but uh, if you expand this form it is x 1 w 1 1 plus x 2 w 2 1 plus x 3 is 4 1 right. So, we can write it for the this is for h 1. Rather uh, z. Okay. So, the whole thing is written in a compact fashion like this then I have to write it for a z 2 what is this okay like x 2 w 1 2 and so on right. And then uh, we have another partition there once the net values are computed for each of the hidden units uh, we use a sigmoidal function to squash the values between 0 and 1. So, we use a sigmoid this one is uh, nothing but a sigmoidal function. Okay, which squashes the value of z 1 in between 0 and 1. Okay. So, uh, this computes the net and this computes the actual uh, value that you are going to be using to compute the output. Right. So, we call that as h here and then again in the output layer I am going to be using the same uh, partition. So, we have a g 1 and a y 1 there and then there is a g 2 and y 2. So, g 1 is computed using v and h. So, again v is a matrix. So, you have g equal to I am sorry uh, v 2 1 into h 2 correct this g 1. So, g 2 again you compute using uh, v 1 2 h 1 plus v 2 2 h 2. So, g is computed using this and then the output again we are use going to be using a sigmoidal function. So, y equal to sigma of g. Okay. So, again and the values of uh, y is between 0 and 1. We are squashing the values between 0 and 1 again here. So, there are two sigmoid that we are using one here and then one here. Since uh, this is going to be a supervised learning where we know what is the expected output. So, we are going to be computing the cost function in this way. Okay. So, which is the T 1 is known which is the target and then Y 1 is computed and then T 2 is known and then Y 2 is computed. Okay. So, for both uh, Y 1 and Y 2 we compute the uh, cost function. This cost function depends on V and W. So, how do I change the weight? It is given by the equation here. The equation here the, the rate of change of uh, cost will give you uh, the change uh, with which you have to uh, update your weight. Okay. So, if you write this W let us say iteration 5 equal to okay. 
So, this is how you update the weights every time. Okay, so, when you do the updation, uh, the weights changes on both uh, between the hidden layer and the output layer, the input layer and the hidden layer. So, we for the simplicity sake, we call this W as input weights, this V as output weights. Okay. So, I think I did this uh, earlier and this slide actually has a cleaner representation of what I wrote in the previous one. Okay, let us move on to the next one. So, how do I compute the change of uh, uh, values right for V 1? So, we know that there is an error that is uh, available and then I need to make some changes so that the error becomes smaller. So, I need to start back propagating the error uh, from the uh, output to the output weights. So, how do I find this? Okay, so it is a very simple way to do that is to use a partial differential uh, equations and I use a chain rule for identifying the uh, weight changes. So if now, what we need to do is to find the rate of change or find the uh, value by which we want to change a V 1, we need to start from the right. So, we know this part, it is easy to compute because all those things are known, right. So, you know the input values, initially we have uh, the weights that are assigned some random values. So, based on that, uh, is there is the net uh, input is calculated for the hidden units and the net output for the hidden units are calculated using a sigmoidal and then uh, we have again a uh, matrix V which are the values are initialized using some random values. Now, how put of the hidden units are known. Now, the values of uh, V uh, are also known. So, do the dot product you get the net output values that is equal to G. Uh, once you have the net output values, you run it through your sigma model function. So, that the values are between 0 and 1 and now Y is known that uh, once you had run it through the sigma model, the values of the outputs are called uh, Y. Right? So, since we know what is the uh, uh, actual target uh, value because this is a supervised model. Uh, we can compute the error between those two uh, output units and then say that okay, there is a, an error that we have received with respect to the target that I am uh, inputting. So, get that change and then propagate it back into the network so that the weights are adjusted in such a way that when I come back next time, the J value is reduced. Okay, so, that is the idea correct as we had mentioned in the uh, previous slide. Right. So, we need to minimize the error for each neuron and at the end we need to minimize the value for the network as a whole. Right. So, that is the idea here. Okay, so, since we know this part, we can go back. Right. So, I can find out with respect to y 1, what is the change? Right? We know the value of y 1, right, which we have computed using the sigmoid. So, with respect to that, what is the change that I can compute? The idea first is to find what is the rate of change or rather what is the change with respect to v 1 1. So, we are going to be adjusting this weight. Right? For me to adjust the weight, I have to come from the left to the right. I know this, I can compute this. So, how do I compute this? Uh, if you take a partial derivative of this, so we have y 1 here only in this space and this will not be used. Okay. The half is used to cancel this part when you take the derivative and uh, finally, what you have is T 1 minus y 1. 
right. So, it is easy to compute, is not it? And this alpha is coming because this delta w is proportional to dou j theta by rather dou v let us call it. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so, dou j theta by dou y 1 is minus of t 1 minus y 1. So, this is known now uh, and then the y 1 got the value from g right. So, this is uh, y 1 is nothing but the sigmoid law uh, g 1. So, now I can do the differentiation rather partial differentiation with respect to this which will give you y 1 into 1 minus y 1. This is nothing but this. And then the next one is uh, really with respect to v 1, because the g 1 is coming in because of uh, not only because of v 1, but also because of v 1 2. Let us first find for v 1 1. Okay. So, why is this h 1? So, now we have to find the uh, partial derivative or uh, dou g 1 by dou v 1 1 and you can find that it is here. right? So, putting all uh, uh, values together finally, uh, dou j theta by dou v 1 equal to this. In the same fashion you find this for dou j theta the output weights are computed using this uh, formula. So, we know this, we know the, the eta value, we know the old value of uh, v and then the new value is computed using this. Okay. So, this is the error due to the back propagation and the weights are adjusted. So, how many ever uh, v you have, right. So, in this case we have only about 4 values, right, 1 1 uh, v 1 1 v 1 2 v 2 1, v 2 2 right. So, we are going to be adjusting all the 4 values here. Okay. The next one is a little bit uh, longer, it is not very complex though, you know it you know, by looking at the number of equations here do not get overwhelmed, it is pretty simple in fact. If you use the chain rule to compute the uh, values and then if each one of those derivatives you just have to figure out and those equations are known all the phi equation that we have here right. These equations you can make use of. Okay. So, do not be overwhelmed initially you know it might look uh, a very difficult uh, part in the neural network, but it is not it is very simple. Okay. So, what all you need to know is what is a chain rule, chain rule is pretty simple. Okay. So, once you know how to represent this using a chain rule and then you can take each one of these and then find the values and then for each one of those you will always have some related equation that you will find in this space okay, here. <coughs> so, what I suggest uh, is uh, first try to uh, write these equations. So, let me again erase this. This draw a network okay, and then appropriately name those uh, weight values like I have done and then start doing this. Okay. It is very simple right, it is easy to compute all of these right. So, these equations are very easy to write. 
So, once these equations are known, then it is only up to uh, the chain rule to really break it up into multiple small partial derivatives and then for each partial derivative you get the values. Okay, let us let us look at this uh, second one. Now, we are going to be going from uh, the j is here and then j to this. So, we have done this. Now, we have to get back here. So, for us to cross this, we know how y was computed, how g was computed and then we know uh, uh, v, we know how h 2 was computed, how z 2 values are computed and we know the initial values of uh, w and so on and we have these equations with us. Okay. So, it, it is bit longer but again I am emphasizing that it is not very complex. So, in this case uh, we are going to be updating the weights, the input weights. So, input weights have to pass through <coughs> uh, rather So, in order for us to calculate the or find the change in W 1 1, we require 2 right, because there are 2 outputs that are generated and then the contribution of those 2 outputs are going to play a role in updating the W 1 1. Okay. So, I am just calling it as dou j theta 1 and dou j theta 2. So, let us first find for dou j theta by dou j 1 1 and it will be very same for this as well. Okay. So, let me break this into multiple small uh, partial derivatives. Okay. So, we start with uh, um, okay. so my related equation is here. So, again I will remove all this. So, I, I need to start with the dou j theta 1 by dou j y 1 because there is a, a change of this is going to have some impact on the weight as well correct. So, I know that it is possible to compute dou j theta 1 by dou j y 1 because we know the right. So, we know this, we have computed this earlier and then we also had computed this one earlier because there is a rate of change of rather there is a change with respect to g 1 for y. So, we have this. Uh, there are two that we have to compute here, one is with respect to h 1 and then with respect to z 1 and then finally, with respect to w 1. So, if you look at the partial derivatives now here starting from the last one right and then uh, we have dou y 1 by dou g 1 correct and then dou g 1 by dou h 1 dou h 1 by dou z 1 and dou z 1 by dou w 1. So, that actually leads you into dou j theta 1 by dou w 1 right. So, this is easy to compute, the second one easy to compute, the third is easy. By looking at the equation you can quickly figure this out and so on. I go through this a few times you know it is as I keep saying this is not very complex the total number of equation may be overwhelming, but it is pretty simple. Your training process is going to be feed one input compute z h g y right. So, maybe uh, the 0 step is initialize 
weights. So, this one is your forward pass, correct. So, you can write another function for the backward pass or the back propagation, which will compute uh, delta V and delta W. And then in the training process, what you do? Update these values. So, the training is done until there is no more change you will find for v nu and w nu and then you stop or you stop at certain number of iterations or if the, uh, the values of uh, do j theta uh, rather the delta theta is very small. So, that is how simple it is and also you know for uh, one uh, programming advice here is uh, do not use the standard uh, model for doing this you know instead of you writing all the loops for the i and j of uh, the input weights and then maybe k and l of the v here and so on you use this numpy where you can write your instruction just as you see in this equation. So, it is so simple you do not have to really worry about the loopings and then indexing problems and all that. Uh, one more thing I also want to mention here is if you refer to certain uh, books or papers they will be using various indices uh, you get yourself familiarized with that. Okay. So, normally the what they do is they use i for specifying the uh, index in the input layer and then for j they use it for the hidden layer and then they use k for the output layer. So, that you know the weights here if they represent it will be j i and then here it would be sorry uh, it should be v k j and then here it could be uh, some let us say y k and so on. Okay. So, we familiarize with you know what is the kind of index they are using otherwise it will confuse you. So, make sure that you uh, understand the index part of that first when you have uh, networks of this type and then see how they are actually changing the weights and then how they are using the indexes and so on. Okay. So, I guess you have understood this part very well. This is very fundamental to what you are going to be doing in the next uh, a few lectures. Okay. This is only an extension of uh, these, the back propagation, uh, uh, the derivatives of uh, the values for uh, w and then how do I use the chain rule to uh, find out and so on. So, instead of one hidden layer there could be multiple hidden layers too. So, you should be uh, very thorough with the simplest one first. Once you are very thorough with this maybe you can look at more complex uh, networks and then understand them. <laughs>